YouTube. This is Elijah, and let me welcome you to a video from the AppLifestyle.org, your one-stop shop for all things rideshare and delivery alike. In this video, we're going to be talking about taxes. Now, <laughs> before we uh, get into it, I'm going to say what this is and what it isn't, okay? It is not in a guide showing you how to basically file the taxes themselves. So it's not showing you how to go into TurboTax or any other program like that and actually file it, okay? I, I consider it a little redundant to make a video on that because there's so many videos on YouTube showing that. Plus me personally, I hand the information to my tax, my own tax professional. So that's not what this is. What this is, is showing you what is tax deductible based on running a Uber business, okay? And a lot of this stuff does apply to small businesses in general, okay? Now, legal disclaimer, I'm not a CPA, I'm not a bookkeeper, I'm not a tax professional, okay? The information I'm sharing is based on my personal experiences, so take it with a grain of salt. Be sure to consult with a tax advisor. With that being said, we're gonna get into it. Now, there's an institution called Stride that uh, is very supportive of uh, entrepreneurs and uh, small businesses. And I will be using the uh, screenshots of their app because they actually outli outlined a good blueprint for tax deductions. And a lot of y'all use Stride, so y'all are very familiar with it. So the format will seem familiar. Uh, as far as the Mal like you app, I mean, they have something very similar. So you could probably uh, find something on there to go hand in hand with what I'm saying. Now, if y'all want to actually read, a, there's going to be a screenshot showing what I'm talking about, but if you actually want to go along, like literally literally step by step with me, you can go on the Stride app. There's a plus sign at the bottom of the screen. Click on it, and then it's gonna have an option to add a expense, and then it'll get you to the screenshots that you will be seeing. So, I will not be covering things that don't so much apply too much to the Uber business, and I'll go into detail into things that apply very heavily, okay? Now, before we um, jump into the actual deductions, you should know that there's gonna basically be two methods of filing when it comes to ride share or delivery. And that's gonna be the standard mileage deduction and the actual expense method. The standard uh, mileage deduction, it varies from year to year, but usually it's around like 53 cents per mile that you can deduct. And the actual expense is any work you have done on your vehicle in addition to a few other things, like expenses related to your car, like your gas, uh, you got your tires rotated, you know, things like that, okay? And I'll, I won't be going detail into the actual expense method, because I really say you should speak with a CPA about that. But when I mention a certain deduction in the Stripe um, screenshot, if it applies to to the actual expense, I will say it, okay? Now, you should know that your first year of doing rides here delivery, actual expense isn't on the table. You have to use your own, the standard mileage deduction. Now, before we go into the actual deductions, let's take a brief overview of taxes in general and why people pay more in taxes. Now, generally speaking, small businesses are allowed to deduct taxes because they're doing things that benefit society, okay? And what I mean by that is, taxes are an expense of living in a civilized society, okay? We give our share of the money to ensure that services and uh, things are provided by the government, okay? Now, when you're an employee, money is taken out of your check to fulfill that duty, okay? Now, when you're self-employed, you know, that uh, takes a new meaning. They don't take it out of your check, hence why we're having this conversation for the most part right now. But you can achieve the same means of contributing to society without necessarily paying money. See, you're in business for yourself offering services and products to people, okay? And the more you do it, the less money you owe because you're contributing overall to society. So if I buy a new MacBook, 
that enables me to make better videos so that y'all can gain more value. I'm increasing the value of my service to society and that's why the MacBook is tax deductible. See, overall, you're still paying the same amount of money. The only difference is you're paying money that benefits both you, the IRS, and everyone else because you can use this to expand your business. If I didn't buy this, well, then it would have went to the IRS anyway. The only difference is I wouldn't benefit, at least not directly. So that's the concept of taxes. We'll go ahead and jump into it. Now, car cleaning, this is where um, car washes and things like that are tax deductible. Now, you got to be reasonable with this. Don't, you go once a week, talking about, I want to deduct tax. It has to be a reason for it, okay? So there's going to be a, a frequency that you get car washes done. It needs to be within reason, okay? Otherwise, it's going to be like a red flag. So keep that in mind. And you can talk to a tax advisor specifically for more information on that. Don't be thinking like going there like once a day. I was like 20 bucks. Oh, that's 20 bucks a day. It doesn't work like that, okay? Genuinely, when you need a car wash, work up a frequency that's consistent and makes sense, okay? Then it's gonna be tax deductible. Moving on, passenger goodies. Now, y'all already know from my right, the top 10 things rides your th driver should do. Then I don't recommend that you have passenger goodies and not really appreciate it in the way that I personally think that they should be. But if you do decide to have them, like gum, candy, whatever, it is tax deductible. Just so you know, I don't personally do it, but hey, if you are gonna do it, write it off. Moving on, office supplies. Now, this one is a big one. This won't apply so much to drivers, but it will if you are thinking like a business. Think like a small business owner, okay? Not an, not an employee or not even a driver, small business owner. Office supplies. See, when I started applifestyle.org, guess what? I fell under the category of blogger. More tax deductions available. When I started this YouTube account, I'm a YouTuber now. More tax deductions available. I mean, this MacBook costs around $1,500. That's a good example. That's tax deductible. I mean, stuff like this is where you get the the big guns, where they say you like a lot of money, and you spent money, but hey, it's bettering yourself, bettering the people you're serving. Why not? I mean, microphones that you need, like you can always upgrade your equipment. It should be an ongoing process. But, you know, microphones that you use, I mean, the software I use to make these videos, you know, alone can cost like 400 bucks. I mean, y'all can't see this, but y'all already know in order to have this background behind me, I have to have a green screen. That's tax deductible. I had to have the studio set up to have the green screen hangover. That's tax deductible. I had to have buy, I don't have them in front of me, but I had to buy the clamps to clamp the green screen onto the studio so that it can hang down from. Tax deductible. When you start thinking like a small business owner, it gets fun. It really does get fun. <laughs> the possibility there is are, are endless. I'm gonna end it there because I could be talking for an hour, but y'all get why I'm born with that. Office supplies, but they won't really apply unless you have a YouTube account or a website, which I highly recommend that you get involved in, okay? <laughs> Moving on, phone service. Now, it's gonna vary based on how much of your phone you use for uh, ride share or delivery. Now, you have a phone strictly set aside for business, then you can deduct 100% of it. But if you don't, you know, what percentage of the, do you use your phone for business, okay? That includes like the Uber app. Yeah, it's broken down by hours. But um, a few ways you can uh, look at that. That's gonna vary depending on every situation. But I'll tell you like, a lot of people I signed up for um, Uber or Uber Eats, you know, a lot of times we'll be friends, okay? So, we can be talking about, uh, I can call them up and they can call me. We can be talking about concerts or what happened on Flash or Arrow or you know, we can talk about whatever. But I signed them up for Uber. So uh, are we having a business conversation? Does that increase the percentage that I'm using my phone for business? You be the judge of that. You get where I'm going. Next up, 
business cards. Now, Uber has it in the terms of an agreement now that you can't have uh, your referral code on a business card. But you know that that never affected me because I have my um, the app lifestyle website. So that's what's on the business card. I'm not in. I'm not infringing their um, trademark because it doesn't have a uh, their name and title, and it's also not having a referral code. So when you do it like that, hey, these business cards are tax deductible and it's not getting you in trouble either. So that's something to think about. Moving on, food and drink. Now, let's say you're Ubering, get hungry, go get something to eat, take an hour off, watch YouTube, whatever, then you get back to it. Well, guess what? The price of that meal, you just ate half of it is tax deductible. So, I just got done having my dinner, so to speak, and I'm doing Uber Eats all day today. Did the lunch rush, getting ready to do a dinner rush. Now, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna take a picture of this receipt and save it in my Stride app so I can keep track of it for taxes. So, I upload this to the Stride app and put all the info, pretty much just the price and et cetera, into the app. Then the app keeps a track of everything I need for the end of the year. Whether you're giving it to a tax professional or you're putting it in TurboTax and handling it yourself. This is really how simple it is. As you just saw in the video, I showed you how to put the information in the uh, Stride app. And you know, it's the same, it's a very similar process with a mile like you. Uh, the best thing about these apps nowadays is you don't have to keep track of your actual receipt, okay? You can just upload it into whatever service that you're using and then bam, that's the end of it. Oh man, that's just beautiful. Didn't used to always be that way, but you can do it that way. So, that's tax deductible and it's very convenient. Client entertainment, that doesn't so much apply to us. I mean, in very rare situations, like if you have a DVD player in your car and then you let your passengers watch it, well, that's the probably the only time that applies, but it, it doesn't apply enough for me to cover it, so we're gonna skip it, skip over it. Printing and copying, uh, not in this particular situation, it doesn't apply too much to us, so I'm not gonna cover it. Advertising, now, any advertising you do to drive traffic to whatever you're using, whether it's YouTube or a website or both, etc., you know, that is advertising and that is tax deductible, okay? So, say you advertise on a podcast, advertise on social media, whatever it is, cost money, that's tax deductible. The sky's the limit on that. I'll let you use your imagination. Moving on. Tolls. Okay. So, tolls, they're kind of tricky nowadays. Because the most time, Uber is reimbursing you for them. It used to be they don't reimburse you on the way to a trip. But they, they're starting to integrate practices where they do. So where this probably has the most relevance for us is at airports. You go in there, if you don't have a passenger in the back, <clears throat> then the toll will be your responsibility. In those situations, if you're willing to keep track of them, then those are tax deductible. And that's gonna vary depending on your situation, so that's 100% up to you. Some people will think it's it might be too minute that it's not even worth keep track of. That depends on how much you go to your airport and all that, as well as how often you encounter toll situations. So that's at your discrepancy. Parking it doesn't so much apply, so we're not gonna cover that. At least it shouldn't. You shouldn't be paying a, a bunch of money for parking. I mean, <laughs> professional development. Now, once again, think like a small business owner. Most people don't know this, but the original Uber East course was designed to be a paid program. It was only gonna be available on the website. But um, I decided to make it available on YouTube for free. And let's say if it remained a paid service, well, you use this money to better yourself and you were able to make more money and increase your knowledge in the process. Well, guess what? That would have been tax deductible, but that doesn't apply directly here now but any information that is furthering yourself that you're paying for as a small business owner. Now don't just think Uber, okay? You gotta go past this. You could attend a small business seminar 
and it costs 100 bucks. And they're showing you how to run a small business, the basics of accounting, the basics of this. Guess what? That is tax deductible. So think of that in terms of a small business owner, not just a driver. Doors will open a lot wider, okay? Phone accessories. As y'all already know, on the App Lifestyle, there are plenty of phone mounts available. And guess what? Not only are you investing in the safety of your city because you won't be looking down at your phone and yourself, but it's also tax deductible. So you spend that money, but you're getting it back in a different form. In uh, accounting, we call that a phantom cash flow because you're getting it somewhere else. So that's tax deductible. Uniform, once again, on the app lifestyle, you see uh, the, via Amazon that, and I've recommended this in uh, the Uber Eats course. And well, in general, I have like a shirt on with the Uber logo or like with the Uber Eats or whatever. Well, guess what? That's the uniform that I use to generate income every time I go out. I mean, I walk in the restaurant and boom, they know what I'm there for. Bam, they give me the food, etc. Guess what? That shirt is tax deductible. Then goes for the hats, etc. It's kind of self-explanatory, so I don't need to dive very deep into that. Just know that that's tax deductible. The software subscriptions. If you're using any type of uh, software that uh, generates additional money for you, can't think of any examples off the bat, but some you gotta pay a monthly fee in order to use the software to make you more money. Let's say if it's a video editing thing that's online, but you gotta pay a monthly subscription, the, et cetera, then that'd be tax deductible. That Maestro app that I've talked about before, that's tax deductible. And that, that's a good way, good uh, example of a software subscription. Moving on, music and paid services. I mean, if uh, you have music services that you pay for so your passengers can enjoy music, that's what, that's tax deductible. Pretty self-explanatory. <clears throat> Inspections, now check with this because I've heard stories just kind of going back and forth, but inspections may fall under the actual expense method, but they are tax deductible, okay? Uh, business travel, if you decide to city hop, which I don't um, personally do for the most part, but if you were city hopping, that would be an example of uh, the mallets being a uh, tax deductible. But you need to show proof that you were making money in that city doing Uber. Just, just be aware of that. Moving on, licenses and memberships. That, that doesn't really too much apply, so I'm, I'm not gonna um, cover it. I mean, in a way it kind of falls under, sub, under the subscription, so we'll leave it at that. Roadside assistance, now that is actual expense, but it is tax deductible. So is the uh, interest on your um, car payments if you're going with actual expense. Dash cam, tax deductible. Um, I wouldn't hold back on the dash cam. I mean, get the best quality one you can find. Don't worry about the price because it's tax deductible. Okay. Now, here, here's what I want y'all to realize. When you have a YouTube account, or a website for that matter. Remember I told you you're expanded into uh, other areas when it comes to taxes? Well, I'm gonna be honest with you. Obviously, I design websites and things like that, but sometimes there, there are elements I love about it. There are elements that I don't like about it. Same goes for videos. So if I'm actually busy, I will just hire someone to do the parts I don't wanna do. Now, people that I use to hire, whatever fees they charge me, hey, guess what? That's tax deductible, because I'm a YouTuber. I'm a blogger. So I'll evaluate, okay, how much is their charging? Then I'll evaluate how fast can I make that money back? If the two balance out, hey, guess what? I'm paying someone to do it. And then I'm writing it off, because it's getting y'all better, faster content from someone else and I'll have to personally do it. So it frees my time up to find more ways to generate money or to even make more videos. Tax deductible. And it slipped my mind earlier, but obviously the uh, delivery bag for you on Uber Eats service, definitely tax deductible. Um, honestly, the more pricier it is, 
the bigger benefit you're gonna get, not just for your customers and your, your convenience, but this time of year, the bigger tax benefit you're gonna get. I'm just thinking out loud. Supplies, and generally speaking, that doesn't really apply much going it further from anything else that I've already explained. Less tax deductible and other, you know, there are small things like, you know what, a lot of people know that I have music in the background of my videos where, you know, if it's not free, then I have to pay a royalty to the artist. Well, guess what? That's tax deductible. And, you know, there are little, I don't call them tricks, but if I'm signing someone up from Uber or Uber Eats, etc., here's where having that website really comes in. You take them out to eat. And I'm gonna give a shout out to the simple driver. He's the one who put me up on this game. So, very useful. But you take a friend out to eat. Let's say uh, y'all talk about Uber. We are talking about Super Bowl for well, well, all, all I care. But y'all are talking about Uber. You send them a text talking about, hey, check out my website. It's the applifestyle.org. Or you can also do this with your YouTube account. The only thing with the YouTube account, you have to have enough subscribers so that you, the URL is in there of your name. But once that happens, you can use that, bam. But I, I don't want this video to get over lengthy, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut it off here. But that's how you handle uh, taxes as a small business owner slash this Uber business thing that we're doing. But you gotta think of it in, terms, in those terms. Don't think of just driving. That's too narrow when you're missing out on income. Think of it as a small business owner. Don't forget to go to the applifestyle.org. This is Elijah, and until the next time, I will catch y'all later. Peace out.